says next U.S. Olympic medal in cross-country skiing is overdue. Bill Koch has been waiting more than four decades for an American to do what he did. Koch became the first, and is still the only, American cross-country skier to win an Olympic medal when he earned silver in the 30-kilometer race during the 1976 Innsbruck Games now 62 and retired, although he still skis every day near his home in Peru, VT. Koch wants nothing more than for someone to eclipse his title. He may finally get his wish in Pyeongchang this month. I think there's a 50-50 chance of a medal, Koch said. And by all rights it should have happened in the last Olympic cycle with, five-time Olympian, Kikon Randall. She was the sprint champion at the time and a favorite, but somehow just came a little short in Sochi. It's really overdue. We're just waiting for it to happen. More, Jesse Diggins hopes for cross-country breakout moment more. Nathan Chen elevates U.S. hopes for figure skating gold perhaps no one gives the Americans a better chance than the women's team. Jessie Diggins, competing in her second games, is the United States' most decorated cross-country skier in world championship history. Last year, Diggins and Randall recorded their best individual races during the world championships, taking silver and bronze in a sprint classic respectively. Coming into the games, the 26-year-old Diggins is ranked third in the World Cup standings. Diggins and Randall had previously teamed up to win the first U.S. gold at Worlds in the team sprint in 2013. Sophie Caldwell, whose grandfather John competed in the 1952 Oslo Games and cousin Patrick skis for the men's team, is also one to watch. Her father, Svr, runs the Stratton Mountain School elite team in central Vermont, where six of 20 Team USA members regularly train. She recently won a freestyle sprint in a World Cup race. Simi Hamilton, who is skiing in his third Olympics, is a contender on the men's side. In December 2015 he became the first American man to win a World Cup race since Koch in 1983, and Koch believes he could be a medal threat in South Korea. With all this talent, why has it been so difficult for Team USA to win in the Olympics? Koch is asked this question every four years it seems. His answer doesn't change much. It's a whole different game, he said, explaining that football and baseball are as popular in the States as cross-country is in Scandinavia and Europe. It's so much more popular over there. There are so many more skiers vying for the top. The U.S. was far from dominant in 1976, but Koch felt he had a chance to medal heading into those games. In the month before the Olympics, I had placed on the podium a couple of times, and so I knew I was in shape and the timing was right, he said. I also took a chance on going in on an early seed, and I was the top American. The rules at that time were that I got to choose which seed I wanted to go in and usually, top skiers, choose the last four, not the first. But the weather was right and it looked like the first might be fast and it turned out to be true. If I had raced in a later seed, I probably wouldn't have won silver. Koch also said that the U.S. team at the time was ahead on waxing technology. Kickwikes in a classic race is important because it gives a skier grip to go uphill. Back then, Koch said the Americans were the first to put alpine wax on their tips and tails and kickwikes on the middle of their skis. Ultimately though, Koch was determined to persevere over his European rivals. The training regimen is as tough as it gets, he said. Cross-country skiing is the number one aerobic sport. It involves every major muscle group in your body and most minor ones too, I'm sure. Since it's so physically vigorous, it requires the most amount of cardiovascular fitness than any sport. These days Koch, whose last Olympics was the 1992 Albertville Games where he was the American flag bearer in the opening ceremony, is still connected to the sport. He skis every day all day when his schedule permits, and helps his wife Kate raise their family. All four of his kids ski, and his youngest son Will, 15, is an aspiring Olympian. Although he lives nearby Stratton Mountain, Koch is not involved professionally with Caldwell's local club and prefers to cheer from the sideline. Should an American win a cross-country skiing medal in Pyeongchang though, there's a chance Koch may not find out until after the fact. The Cox don't have internet access or television.
They're anxious for the results though. We're on pins and needles, he said. It's exciting.